I'm gonna be comparing the Mini 3 Pro with the Mavic 3 to help you decide which one is better for you. So one of the first few things I wanna mention is that the Mini 3 Pro is below 250 grams, which makes it easier to fly in many countries, meaning you don't have to register the drone or get a pilot certificate for it. But with the Mavic 3, you need to register it and get a pilot certificate for it here in Canada. In order to fly in restricted airspace, you need to register the Mavic 3 and you also need to obtain a, an advanced pilot certificate. Or if you want to fly in uncontrolled airspace, you still need to register the Mavic 3 and get a basic pilot certificate. However, with the Mini 3 Pro, you don't need to do either of these. Now let's start with the cameras. The Mavic 3 has a 4x3 inch Hasselblad camera and it also has a tele camera which has a zoom of up to 28 times but it works best at seven times zoom the mini 3 pro has a 1 over 1.3 inch camera sensor and it also shoots in decent like and has a 12 megapixel camera but it can also shoot 48 megapixel photos now one of the unique features about the Mini 3 Pro is it can shoot photos and videos vertically. The Mavic 3 doesn't. The Mavic 3 offers filming in D-Log and in HLG, while with the Mini 3 Pro, you only have the options of 10-bit color, but in decent and like. Because the Mavic 3 has a bigger camera, it has that advantage over the Mini 3 Pro because you get better dynamic range and you, you can film better in low light scenarios as well. It also has a variable aperture while the Mini 3 Pro's aperture is fixed at f1.7. I filmed videos in normal color profile, in D-Log and in decent alike and also took photos in JPEG and I've compared them side to side so take a look. The Mag 3 has an obvious advantage when it comes to camera size and dynamic range and you know to give you more flexibility to edit your videos and photos in post but the Mini 3 Pro also does a really good job at filming in 10 bit decent alike and also shooting 12 megapixel raw photos. The Mag 3 gives you a realistic battery time of about 34 35 minutes while the mini 3 pro gives you 24 to 25 minutes one of the advantages that the mavic 3 has over the mini 3 pro is that it is a much heavier drone that means you can get much stable looking shots when up in the air in more windy situations for example when you're filming hyperlapses or filming slow movement videos the mini 3 pro is mini so it's going to be pushed around by the wind here and there so you might not get as stable looking footage that includes hyperlapses it's going to be very difficult you're going to have to put in a lot of work to stabilize it in post but for the mavic 3 it's more stable you've got a 4x3 inch camera stable in the air and it does a pretty pretty good job at it now, i don't really depend on the sensors when flying but the mini 3 has sensors on the front and the back and underneath while the mini while the mavic 3 has sensors all around so that's another advantage that Mavic 3 has over the Mini 3. The Mini 3 Pro ha the Mini 3 Pro basically has most of the features of the Mavic 3 that even include hyperlapses, active track, but it has active track 4.0 while the Mavic 3 has active track 5.0 and it has point of interest, spotlight, master shots, quick shots, AEB time shots, hyperlapses, but only a minimum of three seconds on the Mini 3 Pro for now. The Mavic 3 is my main drone because it's what my clients require. They want the best looking footage and they want the best looking photos and that is no doubt the Mavic 3. The Mavic 3 is meant for serious professionals who want that immense 
post-processing flexibility and much better dynamic range and the, the stability and the flight time as well. The Mavic 3 standalone model goes for about $1,900 while the Mini 3 Pro with the new DJI RC goes for $905. Which drone you decide to buy will obviously depend on what you need it for. If it's something for YouTube to create content on Instagram Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or just for family or for travel, the Mini 3 Pro is an amazing drone for those reasons. It can film vertical videos which is perfect for Instagram Reels and TikTok and it can also film amazing footage in normal color profiles. You've got options of 4K 60, 1080p and 120 frames per second. You can shoot 48 megapixel photos and you can shoot them in RAW as well. It's got the options of hyperlapses. You can get cinematic sequences in a few taps by using master shots or even quick shots. And overall, it's an impressive drone. It's got a bigger sensor compared to its predecessors and it has an aperture f1.7 which means it allows more light to come in better for you to film in low light scenarios as well and it's also an incredible beginner drone because for someone who wants to get into color grading and get their own stylized look you can experiment by filming in d-log and then you know learning how to color correct and color grade your footage in post to get your own stylized look and you can do that in 10 bit which means there's more colors, it allows you to push the colors even more and, you know, reduce banding as well. Would I use the Mini 3 Pro for professional work? Not really, it depends. If it's just for something to do, you know, some B-roll for YouTube or if it's for certain, for certain properties, yeah, I could definitely get away with the Mini 3 Pro. Um, it films 10-bit color decent alike, which is perfect. It's got an almost one-inch sensor, so really good dynamic range. But when it comes to serious professional work where my clients require me to film in log or in HLG and they want, you know, a bigger sensor to be filming certain things, I have to stick with the Mavic 3. It's my workhorse and it does an amazing job for what my clients require. And that's exactly why I need the Mavic 3 because my work requires me to get certain content using the Mavic 3. I'm one of those people who, while driving home from work or just taking a drive elsewhere to the mall or to the grocery store and coming back and I see something nice, I think it's a nice spot for, you know, a nice drone photo, or get some nice drone videos. I definitely see myself carrying the Mini 3 Pro with me almost everywhere I go because it's just so tiny. I can put it in my pocket. I can put the RC in my pocket. Well, I need a bigger pocket for that, but it's just so light. I mean, it's so easy to travel with. You can just take it with you and just set it up. It, it flies, you know, really good as well. And it gets me that amazing looking footage that I need as well. For the price and what it offers, the Mini 3 Pro is an amazing drone, especially if you're deciding to buy a new one or get into a hobby, or if you're deciding to upgrade from, let's say a Mini 2 or the original Mini to the Mini 3 Pro. It is an amazing drone, it does an amazing job and I'm very impressed with it so far. I'm, of course I'm still going to be flying, there's obviously certain things that it lacks. One of the reasons I got the Mavic 3 is because I can film in D-Log and I'm able to push that 10-bit color and you know have a lot of post-processing flexibilities with the Mavic 3. But with the Mini 3 Pro, it films in decent light. It's pretty flat and it's very impressive because it's in 10-bit color. But still, the Mavic 3 has better dynamic range as compared to the Mini 3 Pro. I definitely will be trying out the Mini 3 Pro in certain uh, shoots that I'll be taking my Mavic 3 with. So I'm gonna test it out, see what it looks like, and I'll post another video about it as well. Like I said before, if you're in the market for a new drone and or if you're about to get into the hobby, the Mini 3 Pro is the drone you want to go for. It is amazing and amazing for the features it offers for that price. It's really good and you will not be disappointed with it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I made another video on the Mini 3 Pro and how I get the best looking hyperlapses and you can watch it right here.